two yeah. national surveys of women, one of women who had had an abortion, and we asked them, who did you talk to about your abortion decision and who was the most influential? And in both cases, far and away, it was the father. Not even close. I mean, not even close. And then we did a survey of men who had participated in abortion, and we asked them, who did she talk to about the abortion decision? We gave them the same list that we gave the women. He said, me, number one. And then we asked him, who was the most influential in her decision to abort? And the guy said, I was. Wow. So you have the women who had it. abortions, right? And the men who participated, both saying that he's the most influential. So when I looked at that <laughs> um, perspective, when I started to care, I'm like, why are we not reaching the guy? It is her body and her choice, legally and practically. But he's a key influencer in that. And if you go back to the biblical narrative, right, God proactively went after Joseph mm -hmm. to call him into a, a, a relationship, to call him in, to step into that. So I know that's hard work. Yeah, I was going to, so <laughs> here we go. I mean, uh, yeah. what do we do? I mean, Karenette, I know part of the program is to have um, outreach specifically to men and to yeah. fathers, like actual programs yes. for fathers associated with the pregnancy center yes. that are inviting and designed yes. for the men, okay? What do we do? I mean, that sounds great, but it, my impression, and I think the impression in, in society often is, well, if they're wanting her to abort, they're not interested in being dads. You know, yeah. where, how do you reach these men? Well, I think you've got, first of all, you have to understand sort of the environment that a lot of these guys are in. So there's a confluence of two kind of social ills, abortion and father absence. If you're a guy who grew up without a father, right, you might be terrified of what being a father is. And so the notion of actually stepping into that role, it's easier to run. And what we've actually had for 40 plus years, I mean, with, with role was basically, you know, men were essentially told that the way to be a responsible man when she says she's pregnant is to say, I support whatever decision you make. Even if you don't feel that way, even that's if a, that's an important cultural script yeah. that has been asserted. Um, important, it's a terrible cultural script. But yeah. if you are a good man, well, first of all, you practice safe sex. You know, right? Sex is not supposed to be safe in that way, and it's supposed to, you know, it can bring life, and that's beautiful. So that it's a misnomer, safe right. sex. But do that, and then if she's pregnant, which often can happen, even right. with safe sex, then your job is to say, I support whatever you decide, your, your, your body, your choice, which is basically putting the weight of the decision on her, Yes. and it's ab, you know, abdicating your role as provider protector. Yes, absolutely. So it's no wonder that that woman is gonna often, is gonna say, I don't want, I'm gonna, like you're not getting down on one knee to say, yeah. I commit my life to you and this child. No, you're saying, whatever you decide. <laughs> Well, and, 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 and it's no wonder if she's yeah. so many women have abortions. Well, and we actually found that's that. not masculinity, by the way. <laughs> if anyone's listening, it's not masculinity. Yeah. This is the crisis of the lack of being a man. Yes, that's hurting so many people. Yeah, and it's been reframed as what responsible manhood is. But and and my thing that you know the insight I had around that is that if a woman tells a guy that she's pregnant, right, it's not because she needs to hear him say, "I support whatever decision you make." because she doesn't need to hear that. It's her body, her choice, legally and practically, right? She could go have the abortion without even exactly. talking legally. That's I believe good point, that when she yeah. tells him, like, why would you tell someone mm. if there's a risk, like if there's a risk that he might encourage you to bring the child into the world, tell other people you don't wanna know, why would you tell him? You just go to your girlfriends or whatever and you guys put the funds together and you go have it done. I really believe that if she tells him, mm. it's because she's hoping against hope, maybe not even practical, whatever, that he might say to her what Joseph said to Mary. Mm. I, I really believe that. Otherwise, there's really no moral, legal, social reason to ever tell the guy. So how do we reach these men, Roland? What do we do? Well, the, you go, you, you invite them. I mean, to me, the, the, what God's model with Joseph is mm. so important. Mm. You go and you seek them out and you call them in. When I first started, started at CareNet, um, and I started to really kind of look at what we were doing on the fatherhood front, I think about 12% of the centers had anything that was focused on fatherhood. Now we're up about 60%. Have some f form of fatherhood programming in some way, shape, or form. Um, and a key thing is just inviting him in. So for example, a lot of pregnancy centers, you know, when, they're, when the woman calls, um, uh, would say, okay, we'd love you to come in, please come in, right? And so what you, when you start to add the fatherhood component, you start to say things like, We'd like you to bring the father as well. We'd like you to bring the father as well. Like just inviting him. How in. often do they come? Do you know any sense? Well, when he's invited, a lot more. But just think, if I if I if if I invited you to dinner and I said, hey, um, you know, I'd love for you to come to dinner, and uh, you might just come by yourself. Yeah. But if I said to you, and I'd love for you to bring your husband yeah. too. Now, yeah. 
maybe your husband's the kind of guy that doesn't like to go to dinner. Mm -hmm. And maybe you like him to go to dinner more. Right. But it's easier to go to him and say, honey, listen, they invited you too. Mm -hmm. Oh. They really want you to come. Exactly. Yeah, it makes a difference. It's certainly exactly. that piece yeah. there. Because a lot of the women who are facing this, they're already isolated. They're already feeling, you know, kind of uncertain. So giving them agency to be able to say, yes, they they want you to meet to come too. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a it's in a, in that moment, it's a cultural reinforcement yes. of it's it's a we, it's an us, yes. not just a you solo. Yeah. And that is the model of the family. The family is we, it's us. Yes. Um, it's I care about you, it's not just me on my own. And your the pregnancy center in a small little way yeah. that can mean the world of difference is saying it's a it's a, it's a it's a you plural not a you single singular yeah and, and part of the the, the conversation the other the other side doesn't want us to have with these women is that you know it, when you're in a pregnancy center context or even a, a, an abortion context or whatever and and you know if you ask the woman okay um, you know does the father know right does the father know about the pregnancy right and often you know the, the woman that responds well he knows or doesn't know but if he says he knows then the next question is like not what he does he think about it. The next question is why did you tell him? Mm. Why did you tell him? What were you hoping that he would say? And then that's the transitional opportunity to say, well, what if we could help him become the kind of man who would have responded the way that you hoped 